Hi students, in this lecture, I'm going to discuss geometric optics. It is also known as ray optics. Let us see the list of concepts. So mainly having here two concepts, reflection and refraction. And coming to reflection, in that we discuss reflection from plane mirrors, reflection from spherical mirrors, and coming to refraction, a refraction at a plane surface and refraction at spherical surface. Let us see now reflection. So first focus on loss of reflection. The instant ray, the reflected ray, and the normal drawn at the point of incidence lie in the same plane. And next one, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Let us see now. So first one, reflection. <clears throat> Let us take this is now a reflective surface. Let us draw normal here. Let us draw normal. If light ray incidence if light ray is incident, let us take now, this is instant ray. And this is now reflecting ray. And angle made by the light ray with normal, that is called angle of incidence. Angle made by a reflected ray with a normal that is called angle of reflection. So we measure now angles with normal. So first one we are saying that that incident ray, a reflected ray, and the normal drawn at the point of incidence. So these three are lying in the same plane. That is the first one. And second one is angle of incidence that is equal to angle of reflection. So these are the laws of reflection. Instant ray, reflected ray, and normal drawn at the point of incidence. All these three lie in the same plane. And second one is angle of incidence and angle of reflection, both are same, right? Let us now focus. How to calculate deviation? See how to calculate deviation. If there is no reflection, if there is no reflection, the light ray is supposed to continue in the same direction like this. If there is no reflection, light ray is supposed to continue in the same direction. But now it is moving in this way. This is now reflecting ray. That means you can see here, this is known as angle of deviation. Okay. So supposed to continue in the same direction like this. But this is now reflecting ray. So the angle between the instant ray, instant ray and the reflected ray that is now angle of deviation. And you can see from diagram, this total angle is equal to 180. This total value, total 180. Now deviation equal to, deviation equal to 180 minus, or you can say pi minus, it is given that angle of instance equal to angle of reflection. That means pi minus 2y or it is a pi minus 2r. 
because I equal to R. So this is now angle of deviation. And in this we can see deviation is anti-clockwise. Supposed to continue like this. This is a reflecting one. So it is deviating anti-clockwise. So when they ask like calculate angle of deviation, so we have to mention is it anti-clockwise or clockwise? It is anti-clockwise. Now see carefully here. If you plot a graph for deviation versus angle of incidence, see graph will be, see it is just like y equal to mx plus c. This is c plus mx. Okay. It is of the form mx plus c. That means from here we can say slope is slope is minus 2 and y-intercept is 5. Okay. So plot the graph here. So plotting the graph, it is deviation versus angle of incidence. So graph will be having negative slope and positive y intercept. Okay. And see carefully when i equal to 0, i equal to 0 means deviation is pi. See meaning of that. i 0 in the sense light ray instance along the normal. See carefully. If light ray instance normal to the surface, this is now surface, okay, normal to that means it is along the normal, right? If light ray is along the normal, then I value zero. This is what we call normal incidence. It instance normal to the surface. It instance normal to surface. That means it is along the normal to the plane. So see the language carefully. It is instant along the normal to the plane. That's why it is known as normal incidence. So for normal incidence, I value zero. When I is zero, deviation equal to pi. Deviation pi means whenever light falls normally on the mirror, then it will retrace the path. Retrace the path means deviation is now 180. So along the normal incident, reflection is now. It is in the same direction, means along the same line. This is now reflecting ray. That means for normal incidence, that means I equal to 0, deviation equal to pi. That means light ray is now retracing the path. Okay. Next, if I equal to, if I equal to 90, see meaning of that. So first we have seen light instant normally, right? Instant normally, that means angle of incidence equal to zero. Then angle of deviation, it is equal to 180. That means it is now retracing the path. So this is what we call normal incidence. Angle of instance zero, angle of reflection also zero, and deviation equal to 180, retracing the path. Next one, when I equal to 90, I equal to 90 means light ray is now instant parallel to surface. It is like this light ray instant parallel to surface. When it is a parallel to surface, there is no reflection. No reflection, no deviation. Okay. So parallel to surface means angle made with the normal that is 90. So when I equal to 90, deviation becomes zero. Means when light falls, Parallel to reflecting surface, there is no deviation because there is no reflection. Okay. And these two points are useful while solving problems. So for normal incidence, 
deviation is 180. That means it is retracing the path. When it instances parallel to surface, no deviation because there is no reflection. Okay. All right. Let us now focus here one more point. That is, so here what we have discussed, angle of instance equal to angle of reflection. It is not only for plane surface. Even reflecting surface is now, let us say, this is now reflecting surface. Whatever may be the surface, it is, it is always valid. Means angle of instance and angle of reflection at that point are always equal. So the sur reflecting surface need not be plane. It can be any shape. So this is for any shape. Okay. Right. Let us now focus one more point. That is. So when we rotate the reflecting surface, let us take this is angle of incidence. And this is now angle of reflection. This is now reflecting ray. If we rotate the reflecting surface, let us take, rotate now anti-clockwise. Rotate now anti-clockwise. If we rotate anti-clockwise, suppose by an angle theta. Now see carefully. If you rotate the plane, reflecting plane, by an angle theta, then angle made by the instant ray with the normal. That becomes now, that becomes now I minus theta. See carefully. So we are rotating this plane. Rotate now this plane. It is anti-clockwise by an angle theta. Then this normal also rotates anti-clockwise. That means I will make diagram separately. See carefully. This was the initial normal. And once we are rotating, once we are rotating the reflecting surface by an angle theta theta this is initial normal take it as n1 this is now present normal okay now we can see angle made by the instant ray angle made by the instant ray with the new normal with the new normal. Initially, angle made by the instant ray with N1, it was I. Now, with this one, it makes an angle I minus theta. See carefully. This total angle was I, right? I'm taking this as N1, the initial normal. <clears throat> with that normal, it was making an angle I. Now, this normal is rotating through an angle theta anti-clockwise. Therefore, with the present normal, the instant ray makes an angle I minus theta. Right? And we can see angle made by the reflecting ray. So this was the initial reflecting ray. And this ray makes with a new normal, see carefully, this was R, or we can say, since I equal to R, this is also equal to Y, right? Now this initial reflecting ray, it is making angle I plus theta, right? It is making angle how much? I plus theta. This is original, means initial reflected ray. This is making an angle I plus theta with the new norm. Now, present angle of instance is I minus theta. Therefore, 
now reflecting ray must make an angle i minus theta with the new normal okay that means it has to change from i plus theta to i plus theta to i minus theta that means by what angle the reflected ray has to rotate that is 2 theta 2 theta and that must be anti clockwise that means conclusion is that if we rotate the reflecting surface by an angle theta then reflecting ray rotates by an angle 2 theta that is now conclusion see diagram carefully i and r initial normal n2 present normal with the present normal instant ray makes angle i minus theta okay with the present normal that initial reflected ray making angle i plus theta at total angle but now it has to make an angle i minus theta because angle of instance equal to angle of reflection that means it has to change from i plus theta to i minus theta that means this ray has to rotate anti clockwise by an angle 2 theta that means conclusion is when a reflecting surface rotates by an angle theta a reflected ray rotates by an angle 2 theta so this is what we are going to use while solving problems okay let us see now problems to get more clarity and before going to problem let us see the points what we have discussed instant ray reflected ray and normal drawn at the point of instance lie in the same plane angle of instance equal to angle of reflection and here important point is angle of incidence and angle of reflection both are measured with the normal okay let us see next one angle of deviation 180 minus 2y or 180 minus 2r the graph between deviation versus angle of instance is a straight line having negative slope and positive y intercept okay if light ray instance normally angle of instance is zero angle of reflection also zero that means light ray retraces the path so deviation how much it is 180 okay next last point when a mirror rotates through an angle theta then a reflected ray rotates by an angle 2 theta so these are the points till now we have discussed let us see problems a ray of light traveling in the direction half into i cap plus root 3 j cap this is a unit vector right see magnitude square root of 1 square plus root 3 whole square means 1 plus 3 root 4 it is 2 2 by 2 1 this is a unit vector a ray of light traveling in the direction it is given is incident on a plane mirror after reflection it travels along the direction again they are given here one more unit vector the angle of incidence is this is the question asked in 2013 advance let us see in which direction light ray incident along which direction reflecting ray is traveling okay calculation of angle of incidence see how to start it let us make a diagram this is now mirror and take normal here take normal let us take here instant ray 
instant ray. This is angle of incidence. And coming to angle of reflection means reflected ray. This is now reflected ray. And this is angle of reflection. <clears throat> now we have to find angle of incidence. Angle of incidence. Given unit vectors are 1 by 2 i cap plus root 3 j cap direction of the instant ray let us call it as a cap unit vector along the instant ray a cap next in which direction ray is now reflected given i cap minus root 3 <coughs> j cap let us take it as b cap okay so b cap is the unit vector along the reflected ray b cap now with the help of these two we have to calculate angle of incidence okay and if you see carefully this angle of reflection we can see if you extend like this this is the path light has to follow if there is no reflection, right? So we are given now this unit vector and this unit vector. If you find the angle between those two vectors, unit vectors, that gives us, that gives us this angle, right? So we have learned that when you want to find the angle between two vectors, we have to take between two heads or between two tails, right? So this is now A cap and this is now B cap. So between those two, what is angle means? This is now angle, okay? That means that angle is now how much means? Pi minus 2i or pi minus 2r, right? That is angle. Let us now calculate angle between these two vectors, right? And we have learned in dot product that is cos theta equal to cos theta equal to it is a bar dot b bar. It is now a cap dot b cap upon their modulus values 1 into 1, right? Here theta means pi minus 2i. Now substitute here cos of pi minus 2i that is equal to a cap dot b cap. See carefully, half into half that is 1 by 4. Remaining 1, i cap dot i cap that is 1 plus and this is minus. So it is minus root 3 into root 3 that is 3 j cap dot j cap that is 1 okay so this is now 1 minus 3 minus 2 minus 2 by 4 minus 1 by 2 okay it is minus 1 by 2 now see from this what we can say cos value minus 1 by 2 means it is 120 so pi minus 2i that is equal to 120. 120, right? Yeah, it is 120. That implies I value how much? 180 minus 120, 60. 60 by 2, 30. It is now 30. Okay. So like this, we are given unit vectors along the instant ray, along the reflected ray. So between these two vectors, angle is pi minus 2i means once we make diagram, we get that clarity, okay? Once we are making diagram, we get that clarity, means what is that angle? And once we are making diagram, remind just a calculation part, okay? Let us go for next problem. So option is, it is the first one, okay, 30. 
if they ask like in this one, what is angle of reflection? It is also 30. Okay. See the next one. Consider a ray of light incident along the direction given by 1 by root 3 minus i cap plus j cap plus k cap. Find the unit vector along the reflected ray if the mirror is placed along yz plane facing the positive x axis. That is, find unit vector along the reflected ray if the mirror is placed along yz plane facing the positive x axis. Right? In fact, from here only directly we can get the answer. If you observe carefully, it is placed along yz plane, right? Facing positive x axis. And see here the given unit vector minus i cap, j cap, and k cap. That means we can see the first one minus i cap. So one component is now normal to the mirror, right? Okay. And we have learned that for normal incidence, for normal incidence, light will retrace the path. So before reflection, this component was along negative x-axis. After reflection, it will be along positive x-axis. Okay. Because light ray is retracing the path. Next, so coming to J cap and K cap. These two are parallel to the mirror. It is given along YZ plane. So J cap and K cap both are along the mirror. That means for these two components, there is no change. That means answer must be 1 by root 3 as usual. In the place of minus I cap, it is now plus I cap. Because it is now retracing the path. And coming to these two, these two are parallel to the mirror. These two are parallel to the mirror. That means there is no change in their directions. See once. So what we have discussed in that mirrors. If light ray instant normally, okay. If I am taking this as, if I am taking this as x axis, okay. Then light ray, we are having one component is along negative x axis, means of falling normally on the mirror, right? One component after reflection is retracing the path, means it moves along positive x axis. So given it is 1 by root 3 minus i cap <coughs> plus j cap plus k cap, right? So here j cap and k cap both are parallel to the surface or parallel to mirror. That's why no reflection means these two remain same. Only this is now reversed. That means... This is now I'm taking as a cap, a unit vector along the instant ray, then unit vector along the reflecting ray, taking as b cap, that will be 1 by root 3. Just in the place of minus i cap, it is i cap, i cap plus j cap plus k cap. Okay, so it is very simple. Just to focus. Which components are parallel to mirror? They remain same. Which component is normal to mirror? That will be reversed. So minus i cap plus i cap. Remain as usual. Okay. Let us see next problem. See the question given. Two plane mirrors. M1 and M2 are inclined at an angle theta as shown. A ray of light 1, which is parallel to M1, strikes M2 after two reflections. 
strikes M2, sorry, strikes M2, and after two reflections, ray 2 becomes a parallel to M2. Okay. See once again, two plane mirrors M1 and M2 are inclined at an angle theta as shown. A ray of light 1, this is 1, the light ray 1, which is a parallel to M1, strikes M2. After reflection, strikes M2. Strikes M2. See, given ray of light 1, which is a parallel to M1, which is a parallel to M1, strikes M2. After two reflections, ray 2 becomes parallel to parallel to M2. Okay. Find the angle theta. Right. Now, see carefully how to solve it. So first note down the given data. It is M1 and this is M2. Light ray instant parallel to M1 on M2. After two reflections, reflection one and reflection two. After two reflections, it is a parallel to M2. It is a parallel to M2. So this is the angle which we have to measure. Okay. So theta we have to find out. <laughs> See carefully how to start. This is a theta means this is also theta. Right. Because it is a parallel to M1. Now take here normal at the point of incidence. At the point of incidence. At the point of incidence. <clears throat> total angle is 90. This is now 90 minus theta. Angle of reflection also 90 minus theta. That means this is now theta. Okay. Next, coming to here, take here normal. Now, since this ray is a parallel to M2, this angle is a theta. See carefully, after two reflections, ray becomes a parallel to M2. Therefore, this makes angle theta with this one. Remaining is 90 minus theta. Angle of reflection, 90 minus theta. Angle of instance also 90 minus theta. That means this is a theta. Okay. Now in this triangle, we can say theta, theta, theta. So three theta must be equal to 180. That means theta how much? It is 60. Okay. So here we are using the geometry. That's why it is named as geometric optics. Okay. Suppose in this they ask like find deviation. Okay. Now see carefully at first reflection. Suppose to go like this if no reflection. But because of reflection of this traveling like this. Right. So it is now deviating anti-clockwise. Right. Instead of going like this. Deviating anti-clockwise. So deviation how much means? Take it as delta 1. Delta 1 equal to pi minus 2i. <clears throat> so we got theta 60. Theta 60. This is now 90 minus 60, right? 30. So angle of instance is 30. So pi minus 2i. It is 120. Anti-clockwise. That we have to mention. Next. Coming to here. Again, if there is no reflection, it is supposed to continue like this. But now reflecting in this way. So you can see deviation is now like this. This is again anti-clockwise, delta 2. This is delta 1. Anti-clockwise, this is also anti-clockwise. So delta 2 equal to pi minus 2i. Now here also, since 60, this is now 30. Angle of instance equal to 30. 
it is again 120 anti clockwise that means net deviation is equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 which is equal to 240 anti clockwise okay see carefully in diagram instant ray this is now instant ray right this is now reflected ray what is now angle of deviation? We can see now deviating anti-clockwise. Right? This is now deviation. Okay. That is a total value. Right. And you can see here this angle. This is 60. This is now how much? 120. So remaining is this is 120 means remaining is 240. That is what we got here. See carefully. Okay. So see, this is 60. So this is how much? 120. Now this is a deviation. So 360 minus 120. That is now 240. That is what we got here. Delta 1 plus delta. Okay. 